And now I'm going to very shamelessly switch over to our next talk, talking about prover networks from scratch. So please give a massive round of applause to Uma from Sync Labs. Um. Hello, uh, I'm Uma, the co-founder and CEO of Succinct. Uh, this talk is going to be a lot less controversial and uh, back to some of the wonders that we're building in this space. So at Succinct, we're building the Succinct Prover Network. And as background, I wanted to start with kind of a history of other compute buildouts that we've seen throughout various different use cases. So the first big compute buildout that we've seen is one of the biggest projects in crypto, or the biggest project in crypto, Bitcoin. Usually when you think about Bitcoin, you think of it as decentralized money. It has a cap supply, this halvening schedule, it's a store of value. But another way to view Bitcoin is actually as the world's biggest compute coordination mechanism. The proof of work mechanism incentivizes a global scale infrastructure build out of miners that are mining the network and increasing the hash rate. And Bitcoin improves its properties when the hash rate is increased and it incentivizes this hash rate to come online and the compute makes the network more resilient and have better properties. And the interesting property about this global decentralized buildout is that Bitcoin's hash rate exceeds that of any one company or even any one nation state. And it's kind of just gone exponential over the years. Another example of very large scale compute buildout, it's also decentralized, although it's not coordinated through a decentralized network, is in AI. So I'm sure we've all seen the headlines recently of things like the Stargate project, which is a plan to invest $500 billion in AI infrastructure and building out data centers and chip fabs across the country. And in general, there's actually a lot of different companies who are working on this next generation of GPU data center, like CoreWeave and Lambda, that have tens of billions of dollars in market cap and lots of revenue in making these GPU data centers specialized for AI workloads built out throughout the world. OK, so now with that background, let's kind of go back to ZK, which is another very co computationally expensive workload that we think will also necessitate a similar sort of build out. Uh, so let's start with kind of what we're building at Succinct, which is a ZK VM called SP1 that makes ZK really easy. So the previous generation of ZK, what I like to call kind of ZK 1.0, you had all these ZK roll-up teams who built their own proof systems, uh, their own roll-up node, and had to build their own stack vertically integrated to deliver on ZK end-to-end. -end. With Succinct, our ZK VM, it makes ZK really easy. So you can just write normal code, you just write Rust, you stick it into SP1, and then anyone can now become a ZK roll-up, or for that matter, prove any computation, not just ZK EVMs. Because SP1 makes ZK general purpose and super easy, it becomes this broad platform for generalizable ZK computation. And so that's kind of why our company's motto is prove the world software, because we've made it so easy to experiment with ZK that now we're going to see all these new apps, including all types of rollups, built on top of this new substrate. And already we actually see a lot of adoption with our ZK VM, uh, mostly in rollups. Uh, some of them are EVM, some of them are other types. And we're working with a lot of teams on kind of deploying ZK at scale. And broadly, um, now that we have ZK VMs, and this is kind of the clear next paradigm of ZK, what I like to call kind of ZK 2.0, where ZK is easy, it's cheap, it's fast, and you can build and prove anything with it, I think ZK will become really, really critical to actually scaling blockchains. And fundamentally, like in blockchain architectures, ZK makes a lot of sense because if you have a decentralized system, uh, historically, the only way that you could have decentralization but verifiability was that you'd have every node in the system re-execute all the transactions. And so that's why blockchains are expensive and slow. There's a lot of re redundant re-execution that imposes fundamental overhead. But with ZK, you can actually flip this on its head. You have one person generate a proof that the computation is correct, and then everyone in the world just verifies that proof very cheaply and doesn't have to redo it. 
So this is why verifiable compute is going to be the fundamental building block behind scaling technology, which is of blockchains, which is something that Ethereum knows very well. And now other ecosystems are also latching on. So for example, like Celestia and Bitcoin L2s are becoming very popular. And even chains like Solana recently have started talking about this concept with their network extensions as they kind of realize this paradigm of scaling and kind of getting to global scale. And a big question people often ask about ZK, and I think they should, is kind of like, what is the market for ZK? And so I think that's, in any kind of like compute build out, it's really important to understand what the demand side will look like. And so there's a few different ways of evaluating this. And the first lens you can look at is just assuming that, you know, every roll up transaction gets ZK proven. So rough, today, roughly roll ups are 200 TPS. In the future, if you have roll up scale, Ethereum DA scales, or maybe another ecosystem scales, you have maybe 4,000 TPS or 4,700 TPS and each transaction pays a tenth of a cent for proving cost, and you multiply it all the numbers, you get that, in general, there will be $150 million of demand uh, for proving. And this is just for the roll-up use case. And that's already like a pretty big number. Another lens to kind of evaluate the quote-unquote market size on the demand side for ZK is looking at what it replaces, which is economic security. So today, if you're trying to build a blockchain, and you're not doing a roll-up, uh, you have to build an L1, and you have to get all these validators to re-execute all the transactions and come to consensus on the ordering of stuff on your chain. And if you look at what chains pay today for economic security per year, it's actually hundreds of millions of dollars each, and in total, it's probably a couple billion dollars in emissions of their token. And that's actually a lot of money, and in the future, you can imagine that some of these chains, it's just strictly a more economical decision to pay for ZK verifiability instead of this economic security verifiability. And so one thing that's really interesting is that if ZK proving gets 10x cheaper than uh, paying for this economic security, well, already that's a really big market. But actually, this could lead to even more increased demand, right? As costs come down, we've always seen that demand for things often arises, and this is a very popular g paradox that people have talked about in AI, and you can imagine a similar thing will hold true for ZK. So hopefully all of this has kind of convinced you that in ZK, we're kind of at this turning point where ZK is finally easy, thanks to ZK VMs and SP1. There will be a lot of demand, and even already today with all the roll-ups, there is a lot of demand, and so now we can finally start talking about the supply side. So given all this demand, and given that ZK is a very computationally expensive workload, it's similar to LLMs, or it's you know, similar to proof of work, uh, to generate a proof, um, we're going to need a lot more proving capacity to kind of serve this workload. And so that is why we're building the Sysync Network. Uh, the Sysync Network is, uh, the mission is to dramatically expand the world's proving capacity to help prove all these use cases of ZK, including but not limited to chains and rollups. So more concretely, what is the Sysync network? Uh, it's a decentralized protocol on Ethereum that coordinates uh, on one side, the demand side that I just talked about, all the users of ZK proofs who are requesting proofs, and provers who are on the supply side who are actually generating these ZK proofs uh, for the end application. And it uses crypto economic incentives and an auction mechanism to help price the proofs and make sure that there's a really healthy competitive marketplace uh, for all this computation. And there's actually several reasons why doing this as a decentralized marketplace makes a lot of sense. So um, there's this popular topic more broadly in crypto of DPIN, which is a decentralized physical infrastructure network. And the prover network falls into that category. It's physical infrastructure, it's a network, and it's decentralized. Um, there's a lot of reasons why ZK Proving is uniquely suited to a decentralized network. Uh, the primary one is ZK Proofs are self-verifying. So if you have a decentralized network where random people across the world are doing tasks and uh, you know, generating proofs, uh, it's critical that their work can be verified for very cheap to ensure that they actually did the work. So there's a bunch of companies who are trying to do decentralized AI inference, and that, stuff like that is very difficult because AI workloads are not inherently verifiable. So it's hard to know if someone did the right thing or if they're just like giving you some random answer of like random English words. 
And so there's a lot of protocols that are trying to come up with kind of clever mechanisms to ensure this verifiability. But with ZK, because the proofs are self-verifying, and that's definitely true, they can be checked by anyone for correctness. So we actually don't care who's generating the ZK proof. The proof is the proof. If we verify it, we know it's valid, and we know we did the work. So it's, in some sense, a more complex, expressive version of Bitcoin's proof of work. Another thing that's interesting about you know, this decentralized physical infrastructure is that anyone in the world can actually contribute their own capacity. And so there are GPU clusters all across the world today um, that are not in data centers that can help be coordinated through the network to provide this proving capacity and make it more efficient. And then over time, we imagine that ZK proving workloads will actually uh, go down the route of Bitcoin proving, or, sorry, Bitcoin mining, where you have more specialized hardware like FPGAs and ASICs that extract more efficiency. And especially once you have specialized hardware, doing it, coordinating uh, existing players like AWS and GCP, they're probably not going to stock all these like specialized ZK proving ASICs. And so it makes even more sense to have this like globally incentivized decentralized build out of this infrastructure similar to Bitcoin. Now, one of the points I talked about previously is that a lot of the world's compute, even GPUs, aren't necessarily in places like AWS and uh, GCP and these you know, tier one clouds. You actually see that even in AI, a lot of the GPU clusters are in like random places and actually coordinated through decentralized protocols as well. So for example, there's companies like Vast AI or Hyperbolic or a bunch of GPU marketplaces that have emerged in AI to coordinate you know, this decentralized build out of, you know, AI, prov AI cl clusters. And I think you can imagine a really similar trend happens in ZK proving as well, because today it's literally using the similar sort of GPUs and it's a very similar workload. Okay, so now I've kind of talked about the motivation for why we're building this network, kind of the actors we're coordinating, why it makes sense to build it in a decentralized way and why it's actually fine that it's decentralized, because verifiability means that anyone in the world can generate a proof, and we're happy with that. So in our network, um, there's this kind of third actor that we introduce called the prover. Uh, so the prover is basically the person who's actually generating these ZK proofs, and uh, that is a critical part of the network on the supply side. So this is a great diagram to kind of illustrate the flow of things in the network. On one side, you have the demand, which is things like rollups, bridges, oracles, but then even Web2 applications like privacy and identity. And then they all get proven with our ZKVM SP1 by just writing normal code. And then those SP1 programs, uh, you request proofs for SP1 programs on our network. And on the supply side, the network kind of coordinates people who are running their own GPU clusters in random places, maybe people who are running stuff on AWS and have spare capacity and a bunch of other actors all across the world. And our hope is that the network kickstarts this virtuous flywheel where basically applications request proofs because the network makes the demand very legible and transparent and pricing legible and transparent. You have provers building out more capacity and then the provers compete on costs. As the proving costs come down, then more applications can be enabled by cheaper and faster proving and then that flywheel kicks and spins to get more and more ZK adoption. The particular mechanism in the network that we coordinate um, is this proof contest auction for provers to compete on price. So normally, um, in proof of work, there's a lot of redundant work. So if you just had a bunch of provers across the world racing to generate a proof, that's really wasteful because too many people are doing the work and it's redundant. And in ZK, cost is super, super important. So that's kind of like a non-starter. In proof of stake, you have this allocation mechanism on like who the person is according to their stake, who gets the next proof. Uh, but that's also not a great fit for ZK because we want people to compete on the price they're able to provide uh, for the proofs, not just according to like how much capital they have at stake. With an auction model, uh, we can kind of get the best of all the properties we want where if you run an auction between all the provers, you can have a single prover who wins according to the most competitive price. And because of that, you, the UX of the network improves more and more over time. And in particular, our auction is special because it has this parameter where it's not always the case that the highest uh, or the best prover wins. 
Uh, so initially, when in the bootstrapping phase, you can imagine that you kind of uh, give smaller provers a chance uh, to win, so it's not just super concentrated market. And then over time, as the market structure evolves and you have many parties competing, uh, then you can make your auction more uh, concentrated so that you're providing the most aggressive pricing. And more details about that can be found in our network white paper that we wrote. So recently, we launched our testnet of a prover network, which allows uh, anyone to kind of submit a request for a proof and um, you know, generate a proof through our initial phase of our network. And in this case, we're actually generating all the proofs. Uh, and there was a lot of proofs that were generated. Um, a lot of people signed up all across the world. They were taking actions like proving Ethereum blocks, doing other fun stuff like proving ZK video games. Um, and yeah, a lot of people kind of enjoyed playing around on our testnet and seeing what's now possible with ZK. And so yeah, we proved over, I think at this point it's maybe over 200K proofs, trillions of RISC-V cycles through our ZKVM. Um, and yeah, people are kind of being exposed to ZK and what it can do uh, for the first time, which is pretty cool. And overall, our goal is that with the network, it's kind of the center of a bunch of ZK applications. And because of what we're building at Sysync and the fact that it finally makes ZK easy as just writing normal code and normal software, you can imagine that you have a bunch of applications that are uniquely enabled for the first time. They can finally use ZK. So our goal is the application layer will be really rich and expressive because ZK is easy. The network will be very fast and provide proofs for fast and cheap and coordinate all these provers across the world who are going to compete and you know, help with ZK adoption. So the next phase is we kind of want to open up our network uh, to the prover side, so make it possible for anyone participating in the proof contest auction and test out our mechanism, make sure that it works end to end and make sure all the provers across the world can start participating. And then finally, we want to have a mainnet with kind of the battle tested mechanism and both the demand side and the supply side uh, fully open. And I think one thing that's also really exciting beyond just our network is kind of ZK's exponential progress throughout the years. Um, and so this is just even looking at SP1's performance um, from when we started around a year ago to now. And since then, we've taken the performance and accelerated by you know, almost 20 to 50x, depending on how you count it. And so we kind of imagine that ZK performance is going to continue on this exponential curve and can even be exponentially increased further with specialized hardware and specialized ASICs, which is hopefully something that our prover network will incentivize the build out, of, build out of over time. Very similar to how Bitcoin mining started with you know, people and hobbyists mining at home on their computers, moved to GPUs, and then progressively FPGAs and ASICs. And we saw the hash rate go exponential over time. We hope that this will also happen in ZK through our network. So to kind of summarize, I think that uh, we're obviously really big believers in ZK. We think that ZK is at this point where it's gonna permeate the entire blockchain stack. You can imagine a future in which every single transaction gets ZK proven. Like every single transaction on a roll up ends up in some sort of ZK proof of a block or you know, a range of blocks. And in this world, prover networks will be a critical part of the blockchain stack. So every transaction today, it pays a little bit for execution, it pays a little bit for DA, and in the future, it'll pay a little bit for proving. And that is kind of like what we see as the biggest use case of the demand side of ZK over the next one to two years. And we hope that you know, with the, what we're building, these networks will make, be resilient, they'll be decentralized, and most importantly, they'll be competitive so that ZK pricing can continue to go down and enable a bunch of new use cases. So yeah, um, that's kind of the entire summary of what we're building with the Sysync Network, why we're so excited about how it'll accelerate ZK. And yeah, you can check out this QR code for our paper. Um, and yeah, come prove with us. Thank you. <laughs>